Hi everybody, today's lesson is a year 13 lesson on torque and rotational inertia. So what is torque? Torque is the turning effect of a force. It's actually the rotational equivalent of force and the symbol for torque is tau and it's measured by the force that you apply on something you want to spin or rotate and so the two important things are the size of the force and the distance from the axis or wherever it's the pivot, okay, where it's spinning. So it could, the formula could either be torque is force times distance or torque is force times radius. So it could be R, it could be D, it means the same thing. Now, just looking at the units in which these quantities are measured. So force is measured in newtons, distance is measured in meters, so torque is measured in newton meter. So that's the the units in which these quantities are measured. Now we can apply Newton's laws to rotational motion as well. So when we say the torques are all balanced in an object, that means the clockwise torque is equal to the anti-clockwise torque. Torque is turning effect, so you don't usually say left and right. You use the words clockwise or anti-clockwise. So when the clockwise and anti-clockwise torques are equal, then two things can happen. The object is either stationary or it is spinning with constant angular velocity. So we need to use rotational quantities when you're describing rotational motion. And the other one is, and so if the object is stable with balanced torques, then we say that the object is in rotational equilibrium. Okay, that's another term that's used. So you talk about linear equilibrium in the same way when forces are balanced, but when torques are balanced, you talk about rotational equilibrium and one of those two things can happen. It's either stationary or spinning with constant angular velocity. Now, if the torques are not balanced, just like how you have an unbalanced force causing acceleration, in the same way, when you have an unbalanced or leftover torque, it's going to cause angular acceleration. And just like how mass is a proportionality constant for this equation F equals ma, which we've learnt, the proportionality constant for this is the rotational equivalent of mass. And the rotational equivalent of mass has a symbol i, and this i is called rotational inertia. So what is rotational inertia? Rotational inertia tells us how hard it is to get an object to start to spin, or if an object is already spinning, how hard is it to stop spinning? Okay, so that's what rotational inertia is all about. Now, what does rotational inertia depend on? Now, rotational inertia actually depends on two things. It depends on how massive the object is, or in other words, the mass of the object, and also how is this mass as distributed in an object. So, and there is actually a formula for rotational inertia, which is not, not given on your formula sheet for NCEA. This rotational inertia has a formula KMR squared, where I is rotational inertia, K is what's called the shape factor, and it's usually a constant like one or half or two thirds or two fifths, depending on what the shape of the object is, and you'll be given that. And M is the mass of the object, and R radius squared is how far is the mass from the axis of rotation. Okay, so that's what it depends on. And the unit for rotation inertia basically depends on the units for mass and radius, so mass is measured in kilograms, your radius is measured in meters, so rotational inertia has the symbol kilogram meter squared. So that's how you figure out what the unit for one of these quantities are. Look at the formula, okay? And then just break it down. That's just a constant, that's a number, all right? So, and there's loads and loads of things about increasing or decreasing rotational inertia so the further away, so if you're walking on a tight rope, what you tend to do is to prevent you from twisting and falling. You tend to put your arms out. Why do you do that? That is because when you put your arms out, your mass is spread 
further from your axis of rotation. Your axis of rotation, you're going to be spinning at, the, at your ankles. So that's where you're twisting and turning. So the further away it is, the greater the rotational inertia and less the chance of you slipping and falling off the tightrope. So hope that made sense. Bye for now.